first of all, uh, you know, when JNUTA called for called for lectures to be held in this Freedom Square in, uh, some month ago, it was a thrilling movement. Uh, teachers' associations around the country, around the world perhaps, are meant to defend the interests of teachers, their houses, their uh, service conditions, their salaries, etc., etc. But here is a teacher association which engages in, which organizes lectures on nationalism, which, which goes to such great lengths to take such great troubles to organize lectures, and what great series of lectures it organized. It was a thrilling moment to be a part of, to have been at least a part of JNUT at one time. I'm retired now 12 years ago, but I was a part of JNUT, and it was such a thrilling movement for us to come back to that JNUTA which we cherished so 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 greatly. And JNUTA is different from other TAs because JNU is different from other universities, you know. What is the difference between JNU and other universities? You know, I, uh, we have all been brought up on this epigram of, uh, epigram of uh, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Uh, all history is a history of class struggle. Haven't we? We haven't heard of that. We have heard of that from school days. Yeah. I would like to change it somewhat, amend it somewhat, and I would say uh, all history, in a way, is a history of the right to assert, the right to question, to assert the right to question received wisdom, and on the other side, the right to deny that right. On everywhere there is a right to question, assertion of the right to question what you receive. Whether you receive it in the family, when the child grows up, child is a child, so very beloved of everyone, then grows up into teens and begins to assert oneself. Uh, I like to, the, she says, I like to wear this kind of dress, not that kind of dress. And the family says, no, you can't wear that. You know. We can't wear that because that's not what our society allows, that's not what our culture allows, that's not what our tradition allows. Here is a questioning of that culture, of that tradition, of that received wisdom from the family. Here is a questioning of that, the right to question that, and the other side, I, other side the assertion of the right to deny that questioning. You can't question that, what you are going to wear, you know, and so on and so forth. You know, it starts from the family itself. This conflict between the right to assert your, uh, the right to assert the right to question and the denial of the assertion of the right to question. It's asked from the family. It starts everywhere, vis-a-vis vis -vis your community, vis-a-vis -vis your neighborhood, vis-a-vis -vis your nation, vis-a-vis -vis your university, your teachers. Everywhere there is this conflict between the right to ask questions and the denial of this right to ask questions. And yet questions have been asked, will be asked. They have, people have, great, great people have paid their, with their lives to ask questions. Socrates, we know, uh, he, he never lectured to anyone. He only encouraged, he only asked questions in conversations with his audience. Asked more questions and more questions. And then he started asking very dangerous questions of the state and he had to lose his life. And we know that uh, Mansur al-Hallaj asked the question, why, why should God live only in the, in the mosque, inside the mosque? God is inside me. I am God. Why must I follow only the dictates of the Malvis who tell me this is the way to pray God? And he had to pray with his life. And so on and so forth. You know? uh, so that many times the right to assert uh, the, the, right to, the, the assertion of the right to ask questions proves very, very costly, very, very expensive. It, it costs even your life. Many times it has happened in history. And yet the questions have survived. Those lives have not survived, but the questions they asked have survived. And they have in a way, they have in a way won against the denial of the right to ask questions. That is really the history, the history of assertion of questioning received wisdom, going beyond received wisdom, 
sometimes at a heavy cost, sometimes at low cost, sometimes at present costs, present uh, experiences, and yet that is really the, the conflict that has gone on since history, throughout history, and goes on today. And that is the right we have to defend today. We are being asked, we are being, we are we are, being, we are asserting our right to ask questions and we are being denied that right to ask questions. In a way, it's a conflict between singularity of truth. There is one single truth and the plurality of truths. That is the conflict. One single truth, the Pope knows all the truth. The rest of them are, are, are they engage in falsehood. The Imam tells you what the truth is. The rest of all is kufr, <coughs> falsehood. The RSS tells you what the truth is. The rest is all falsehood and so on. So that the conflict between the singularity of truth and the plurality of truths, the conflict between one truth, assertion of one truth, the assertion of questioning of that one truth and the assertion of many truths, that is at, at any way at the center of things throughout human history, whether in life or in society or in the universities or wherever. And therefore, JNU promoted that right to ask questions. JNU stood out. Most of the students who came here, are probably it's still true, but I'm talking of the beginning of the university in the 1970s and 80s, 70s actually, 72, 71, 72. The most of the students who came first time in 72, they were amazed at the freedom to question your teachers. They had never experienced it before. How can you, how can you ask, how can you question your teacher? Not merely, sir, can you explain this to me? But questioning the very, the very formulations of the teacher, the very viewpoint of the teacher, and being encouraged to do that, you know. That is what thrilled the students here in the 1970s and 80s, probably still does that, you know. That is what distinguishes JNU, the right to ask questions and the right to fight for, and the right to propose that there is a plurality of truth, there is not one single truth. And that is the fight which is going on. Because we are asserting that right to the plurality of truths, the right to ask questions which you are being denied. In a way, you know, the, the, the struggle at JNU seems to me to be to the mission here seems to be to delegitimize JNU uh, precisely because it legitimizes the asking of questions. You know. So to delegitimize JNU as a center of excellence. Therefore, friends, it's wonderful, it's just exhilarating that JNU TA and my friends Janki and her colleagues and students who participated, who, who, who heard these lectures in, in, in hundreds of, and hundreds of them for hours together here in this Freedom Square. It's wonderful that JNU stands up. JNU gives us hope in the midst of all the darkness around. JNU still gives us hope that the right to ask questions will assert itself against all the odds or odds that have been stacked against it. Thank you very much. We have always been a hero of the people who have 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 been